All right, well, what's up, everybody? Grim Green back here today, hanging out with this Profile Mesh RDA. We're just going to be taking a look at it from top to bottom. We're going to pull this mesh out of here. We're going to put new mesh in. And then we're going to pull that mesh out of there and put a coil in here because this RDA can do both. So starting at the top, yep, you got an 810 compatible drip tip. And all of my favorite DHD nub tips fit in here perfectly so we can go full, you know, super tone ska look on here. It's 24 millimeter diameter RDA. Airflow on one side, airflow on the other side. This airflow is insanely smooth and just beautiful beautiful to use. The AFC is where we're going to come to our first bummer, unfortunately. Because the RDA is black and because the AFC is black, it's really difficult to see where you've adjusted your AFC. You, you can't even see it on video. Maybe a little bit. You can kind of see where it's going. I adjust my airflow to taste, which we'll do when we get back up to top, but I wish that the inside of this was just stainless steel so that you could have a very clear distinction and see exactly where your AFC is opening or closing off. As far as the fit and finish of the AFC, it's fantastic. It slides and glides just perfectly. When it's first dry right out of the box, it's going to be a little bit stiff, but as soon as you get some e-liquid lubrication on those o-rings they snap into place and they glide and they stay wherever you want them to stay it's real nice to adjust this afc thankfully boom there's that mesh the mesh has like an instant heat up ramp up time and there's your deck right there you can see there's two clamps on either side that's going to hold your mesh in place and then you got a big old mess of cotton just going right through the middle of it so now we're going to go ahead and pull this cotton out of here this mesh is sitting right now at a point two and this is on a parallel unregulated box mod and still the ramp up time is instantaneous phillips head screw on this side is going to loosen that clamp phillips head screw on this side is going to release the other clamp and then the mesh just comes out. This Canthal mesh seems to be pretty resilient. This is after about two weeks of use and it doesn't look like it has any wear on it. This could easily go another two weeks, maybe longer. And here's where we're gonna get to the real innovation of this atomizer is this little spring-loaded ceramic little platform right here. Joel is a genius. This is an unbelievable idea. It's a perfect design for a mesh RDA. What this little ceramic guy here is gonna do is when you wick it, this is going to press your cotton up against your little mesh arch. And what that's gonna do is create a really consistent, consistent vape. You're not gonna get any hot spots. You're not gonna get any burning because that cotton is pressed up hard against your mesh. And I think that is just a brilliant design choice. You got a hole right there where your juice is going to come from, from your squonker. Just be aware this Profile RDA does come pre-installed with the squonk pin on it. So if you're planning on using this as a dripper, you're going to have to swap out that pin. It comes with two pieces of mesh style coils. As you can see, this isn't actual mesh. It's canthal or canthal if you're Pibisardo. But what's critical here is these edges on this canthal mesh style coil are sliced clean. There's no jagged edges edges over here. If you were to use your own mesh and just cut it, you would have a bunch of jagged edges over here, which is going to make wicking it a nightmare. These Watofo included Canthal mesh style strips are going to be uh, all you want to use. It's just going to make your life a lot easier. And they also sell them in these 10 pack tubes as well, which is real super handy. They also sent along some of this six millimeter Watofo cotton, which is what we're going to be using for the mesh on this profile RDA. Yeah, look at that. That, these huge, huge puffs of cotton with like a little shoelace string on the end. These are fantastic for wicking that mesh perfectly. You also get an included frame staple coil, which we're going to be installing today. And you also have a bag of spare parts. Those are two springs for that ceramic block in there. You get a bunch of spare O-rings, two spare screws for the clamps, and then a non-squonk pin. A Phillips head screwdriver and this Watofo tool are included. And this Watofo tool makes installing mesh so much easier. You have a thick side and a thin side and all you're going to do is you're going to take your mesh and you're going to just bend it over the thick side and that's just going to put the perfect little arch in it for installing on these clamps so once you unscrew those phillips head screws these little clamps just slide back real easily you kind of just place your mesh in here it creates a nice little arch you can also use this big end of the tool to kind of hold your mesh in place as you're screwing it down i don't find that you really need to do that once you place your mesh in here that's where it's going to sit and it sits there perfectly. Just kind of hold your mesh 
tighten the screws, boom, you're good to go. And if I press this button, oh, it's crooked. You see that? I should have used the tool, man. It's a little bit crooked. This is something you're gonna wanna fix. You don't want your mesh like leaning to either side. Well, that's what I get for trying to take shortcuts. Okay, that's a lot better. And now when you press it, when you pulse it, it's just gonna heat up instantly. And there's no real reason to even do this. I just like to do it because I like to see it heat up so evenly. And of course, if you're gonna dry burn your mesh, which you don't really need to do, make sure you cool it down before you stick the wick through. This is plastic on the end of the wick and you don't wanna melt this to your mesh in any capacity. Capacity. That would be very bad. Easily slides right through, easily slides right through. And it's a lot, it's a lot of cotton that you're gonna be pulling through here. And it's gonna be snug. It does sometimes feel like a little bit of a waste using this much cotton for just one tiny little mesh arch. Unfortunately, this Watofo cotton is just cut in a way that I haven't been able to get two coils out of one puff. It's just the wrong damn length. If it were a little longer, you might be able to get two coils out of it, but as it stands, no, you can't. You're gonna get one out of it. And you don't just cut this cotton like you would cut any normal cotton on an RDA. I found that the angle technique works the absolute best. So I'm gonna set my profile exactly the way it is now with the mesh, you know, perpendicular to myself, and you're gonna cut it at an angle kind of like this, right about there. Ugh. And it's a lot, it's a lot of thick, thick cotton. Do the same thing on the other side. And then it's kind of just a matter of grabbing that little bit of cotton and pressing it down into the deck here. Grab this side of cotton, push it down into the deck here. And yeah, that's it. If we were gonna continue forward with this, which we are not because I want to install that framed staple coil, then you would just juice this up and you'd be ready to go. When you squonk this, it's gonna squonk liquid directly into that cotton, right through that ceramic plate. It's gonna soak up everywhere, give you a nice, real saturated wick, real saturated mesh. And it's still a little crooked. Oh man, that's fine. It doesn't matter because we're taking this out anyway because I want to install that framed staple. Boo. Another kind of bummer thing is the included frame staple doesn't fit on this particular tool. I wish they would have made these the same diameter so you could use this included Watofo tool to install this coil, but as it stands, the, the, the tool itself is just too big. Luckily, I have my Amazon graduated tool to use. I know that I'm gonna have to pre-clip these leads, so I'm kind of just going to eyeball it for now. Well, we got those clamps open. Let's see how quickly I can do this. Well, not bad. I'm just gonna take my tool and I'm gonna pull up on this coil just a little bit. Looks like it got a little bit wonky there. Just making sure these clamps are nice and tight. Boom, glowing, glowing real nice. So, eh, it's maybe a little fiddly to install, but that went in pretty damn quick. This has been going on long enough. Let's just real quickly wick this thing. I'm not usually a big fan of fluffing out your wicks, but in this case, I do like to give them a little bit of a fluff once you kind of get them down into that juiced reservoir area, the, the uh, you know, the juice well. Just give them a little bit of a fluff so they take up most of that space. Now let's see how this hot squonking action works with a coil on there. Oh yeah. Getting the coil nice and wet, getting the cotton nice and wet. Boom, and there's the vapors. All right, well, this has been way too long. Let's put this thing back together. Let's get back out to normal view. Let's vape it. Also notches, sorry, there are notches right here and there are notches in the top cap and you just line those notches up and it's gonna line up your airflow with your coil perfectly every single time. All right, now let's get back out to normal view. Let's vape the profile. So yeah, honestly, man, I've been having a really rad time with this profile RDA. So bummer things first. AFC is a real bummer. It's a black atomizer with a black AFC and you just can't see where you're adjusting your airflow. Even, I mean, look as close as you want you're not gonna be able to see exactly which holes you're covering up and which holes you're leaving open. The way that I adjust the airflow for my particular taste is I'll set this in here and it'll be full open. So right now, 
huge, full open. Full open is just a lot of airflow. Personally, too much airflow for me. So what I like to do is, it's gonna be weird, but it's the only way I've found to adjust this airflow accurately. I put it in my mouth and I kind of drag in and I twist it as I'm dragging to get like the, the perfect airflow that I want. Like slowly like start closing it off and get it right where I want it. And that's adjusted how I like it, and I can't even see where it is. It doesn't matter because it feels right to me. I have to adjust this airflow based on feel. Now I was gonna say another bummer is the flavor from it, but that's not entirely true, especially if you're using a coil in this. If you're just using the mesh, look, the mesh is gonna give you a great vape, and that little ceramic spring-loaded pedestal in there, awesome awesome idea it holds your cotton like pressed hard flush up against your you know up against your mesh it reduces things like dry hits or hot spots or anything like that unfortunately that one little band of mesh could never flavor wise possibly hold a candle to even a set of aliens. Use Clapton's and frame staples and alien wires are always, always going to give you better flavor than one little piece of mesh. The one little piece of mesh vapes awesome and you still will be able to taste your juice. But going between one single piece of mesh right into like a single alien wire, you're gonna notice a huge difference in flavor. The alien wire is just going to have so much more flavor to it. Thankfully, this can use a single alien wire and it's fairly easy to install with the little clamp system in there, but you can just squonk this thing, it doesn't leak, and it keeps everything like very nice and saturated. The juice comes up right through the middle and just floods that deck. And even if you were to over squonk it or over drip it just a little bit, the tiny, tiny airflow holes kind of hold back that juice and prevent it from kind of spilling out the sides. Another slight bummer on this is because of the way that the mesh is positioned and because of the way that your coil is positioned right there, like you look down your drip tip, you just see the coil right there. If it's real saturated. If you've freshly dripped or freshly squonked and it's real, real saturated, it does have the tendency to get just a little bit spitty on you. Both mesh and coils, they kind of explode with vapor, right? And some of those little projectiles of vapor have the tendency to go right in your mouth, especially if you're dragging on it and kind of bringing them along with your airflow. Like I said, it only happens if you get real overzealous and, and really drip on there and get it real saturated or squonk it real hard and get it real saturated. The overall construction, I mean fit and finish, top to bottom, flawless. Watofo did an awesome job manufacturing this. The O-rings all fit together real nice. The AFC snaps in place, feels really nice. The deck itself, those clamps, it's all put together and machined really well. The little tabs on the inside that lock into the deck, Perfect, just perfect. And as far as the quality of vape goes, it's awesome. It's an awesome vape. Whether you're gonna use mesh on it or whether you're gonna use a coil on it, you're gonna have a good vape from this atomizer, man. Yes, and that was freshly, freshly squonked and it was definitely spitty. It's just, I mean, there's no way around it. It's just a really enjoyable vape experience. So let's get down to brass tacks. Are you gonna need your vape budget hands if you wanna check out the Profile RDA from Mr. Just Right One and Watofo? No, not really. Clicking around the internet, I found this anywhere from 30 to $32. A few places had it as high as $35, which isn't, in my opinion, really in vape budget hands territory. It's almost, if it was like, 25 bucks, it would be just like that right price to buy it just to try it out. But I feel like even at 32 bucks, it kind of falls into a very similar category. Now, 
Here's the hard part. Let's play the aliens game. If the aliens or the FDA come and take everything I have and I have nothing left to vape, is the Profile RDA something I would seek out and buy right away? I mean, of course I'm going to give you an ambiguous answer. Here's the thing. Mr. Just Right One knocked this out of the park. This is a fantastic atomizer, top to bottom, fit and finish, the design, it's real well laid out, it makes a lot of sense, it's real easy to build, and it delivers a, a very stellar vape experience. The thing is, I'm just not a big fan of mesh RDAs. I don't like vaping off of one little single piece of mesh. Even in like mesh sub-ohm tanks, I much prefer multi-core mesh coil heads, like two or three cores of mesh in my mesh coil heads to deliver me the flavor that I'm accustomed to with drippers. You can certainly put a single coil in this atomizer and get that good flavor. But I really feel like by doing that, you're not taking full advantage of the design of this atomizer with that ceramic plate and the way that this deck is set up, it is much more conducive to mesh. This is designed to be predominantly a mesh atomizer that happens to be able to install a single coil on it as well. So me personally, not being a huge fan of mesh and this being a mesh base Based atomizer, it's probably not something I would buy right away, but that doesn't mean it's not a stellar, stellar atomizer. So yeah, there it is. Profile Mesh RDA. It is the best mesh RDA on the market. I mean, on the market period. Joel did it. Thank you so much for watching everybody. And as always, yeah, dude, let's keep on vaping. <laughs>